There are a lot of teenagers out there working. Some in fast food. Who's that for here to go? Some in agriculture. Five pounds. There you go. Some in grocery stores. Well, there you go. You. Yeah, no problem. Can I get something for you? It's estimated that 80% of teens work at some point before they graduate from high school. The reason I have a job is because I've been saving up for a car ever since I first got the job and we've got a couple thousand saved up. And after I get a car, I don't know, I'll probably just either keep saving for something else I want or uh, just start blowing it all on clothes and food. For most teens, working is a positive experience. For some, however, it turns out quite differently. Five years ago, Mallory spent part of her summer vacation staying with a friend's family. The two girls, both 14, worked in the family's ice packing business to earn money for church camp. It was August 7th at 7 o'clock at night, and we were bagging the ice, and there's a preset amount of how much ice you get in the bag, and I messed up on the bag before, so it came out too much ice in that bag, and then not enough in my bag. So I went around the back of the machine to fix it. I was filling it up and the bag slipped out of my hands and it fell into the auger. And I reached in and grabbed it and pulled both my arms in. I was stuck in there for 55 minutes while the paramedics tried to figure out how to get me out. Mallory was finally released from the machine and flown to the regional trauma center. It cut my tendon and it cut my whole arm open. See in this backside too. And it twisted this one around and broke it in half and my fingers were at my elbow. So it made all the muscle in my arm die, both of them. When Mallory got out of the hospital, her entire life was changed. When I got home, I couldn't do anything for myself. I was just like a, a newborn, pretty much. My sister had to dress me and help me go to the bathroom. And my mom had to stay home from work to take care of me for, I think, two months. And so it was pretty much hard on the whole family. Since then, Mallory has undergone six surgeries and skin grafts to repair bone, muscle, nerves, and blood vessels. After extensive physical therapy, she has learned to use her hands again, but she'll never be quite the same. She can no longer play the flute. It's exhausting to hold a paintbrush for very long. And she's not the athlete she used to be. She was a very good jet skier, an excellent swimmer, um, great at sports, um, and, and that very much changed for her. Um, she didn't, I wouldn't say that gave up, but her arms gave up for her. And that was very frustrating for her because of the things that she was able to do prior to that. I can't lift a lot of weight. I'm pretty handicapped in that way. I'm never gonna get strength back in my arms. I lost all that muscle and it, it won't regrow. So I'm just gonna be weak for the rest of my life. Jobs such as the one Mallory was doing are considered too dangerous and are prohibited for any minor. At least 230,000 teens are injured in the workplace every year in the United States. Of those, 70,000 get hurt badly enough that they have to go to a hospital emergency room. Most of those injuries are burns, cuts, and sprains. Other more serious injuries are broken bones, concussions, and amputations. Unsafe equipment, stressful conditions, and an adequate safety training are often factors in those injuries. Every year, at least 70 teens will die from work-related injuries. The most common ways that probably someone would get hurt is mainly burning themselves on the scalding hot water that you do. Um, the worst thing that happened to me was just spilling hot water Americano down my arm. In my job in the deli, the most common way you can get injured would be slipping or falling on the floor or even burning yourself, which I've done on the hot case or um, 
dealing with anything that's hot, like the grills or something like that. Ooh, it's hot. Watch out for heat and sharp things. Teens are injured twice as often as adults, partly because they're inexperienced and unfamiliar with many of the tasks required of them. They're new to the world of work. I'm 17. Um, this is my first job. Uh, I've been working about a year and a half now. We have to be here at 7 in the morning, and I've never been late, which is pretty cool. Well, I've been working here for four weeks now, and I've learned that it's pretty hard. I mean, it's like there's pressure like from your managers, and um, you have to do well, stocking, you have to be fast, because products actually go pretty fast, so you have to keep stocking and stocking. Young workers are often reluctant to ask for help or to question work practices for fear of appearing incapable or of getting fired. There's an implicit trust that why would they tell me to do something if it were dangerous? Or if they're asking me to do something, they must already think I'm supposed to know how to do it. So it's a very difficult thing for an adolescent to speak up and ask questions and appear that they don't know something. Can you be curious at the counter? Yeah. The advice I'd give to teens just starting to work would be just to ask the questions, even if you think they're going to be silly or your employer might think that you weren't listening to the instructions, but just ask because it's better to be safe than sorry. It's going to be 1825, please. Working is a good experience for teens as long as it's a safe experience. Do you want those in a bag? It teaches them responsibility, they earn money, and they learn what it takes to keep a job. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. When kids enter the workforce, uh, the, the first thing that, they, that, they, that they're hit with is responsibility and, and consequences to actions. And it's not just about earning money, it's about how do you earn money and how do you earn more money and how do you get satisfaction out of uh, what you're doing. Uh, no, the triple counts aren't quite ready yet. I think working as a kid is a really good thing because it's taught me how to deal with my money and kind of the value of like buying things because now when I think about oh do I really want this shirt I think oh it's $21 that was three hours of work do I really need it that bad so it's kind of given me an appreciation for things that I have. So what if you're one of these teen workers how do you make your experience a safe one? No matter how old you are or where you work all workers have rights on the job some of those rights specifically protect teens. For example, depending on your age, there are limits on how long you can work. This is to ensure that you have adequate time for schoolwork and other activities. There are also restrictions on how early and how late you can work. Young people are not allowed to be working alone past 8 p.m. without an adult supervisor or some adult present, someone who's 18 years or older. This restriction applies to retail and service jobs and is especially important because 50% of teenagers work in retail settings. And whenever money is present, assaults and robberies are a concern. We're trained just to go with the flow and don't resist and just give them the money in that case. Um, our employers mainly just want us to be safe. For workers under 18, there are also restrictions on doing certain kinds of work and on using some machines because they're too dangerous for teens. Because I am 18, I am able to use the slicer here in the deli, and so far, by using the safety skills that they've given me, I haven't had any accidents. There are different regulations uh, when it applies to an agricultural job versus non-agricultural, such as grocery stores and restaurants. And then we do have differences if you're a 14 or a 15-year-old, you have more restrictions than if you're 16 or 17. Once you turn 18, there are no special protections uh, required. Keep on going. When you're going to come down, do the same thing backwards instead of doing this, trying to run or something like that. You could trip, you could fall frontwards. It's the employer's job to know the special regulations that apply to teens under 18 and to provide a safe work environment. That includes providing proper training, identifying any safety hazards, and providing protective clothing and equipment if necessary. When you start filling up the flats, just make sure you're wearing adequate clothing. Don't wear something that's too long that could get caught right here in the inspection belt. Could I get caught here, here. When you're sitting over there, you could get caught on the chains. The Department of Labor and Industries regulates 
workers' compensation, the health and safety regulations, and the child labor and the wage and hour regulations. We're involved with making sure you get the minimum wage, that you paid for overtime, that you get rest and meal breaks, as well as a safe environment to work in. And if you're hurt on the job, you have the right to file a workers' compensation claim to pay for medical expenses and lost wages. But you need to file the claim yourself. I understand you have an injury related to work. What you do is go to your doctor or nurse, tell them that your injury occurred in the workplace, and they will help you file a workers' compensation claim. So have you had a chance to fill out your labor and industry paperwork? Uh, I think mostly. Okay. It's your responsibility to follow all safety procedures for your workplace. This includes wearing proper clothing, using any safety equipment provided, and telling your supervisor if you see any safety hazards. When I first started working here, I, I was taught to never push more than 10 carts and always wear my vest. It's important to ask questions. Go to your supervisor if something doesn't feel safe or if you're not clear about how to do any part of your job. There you go. If you don't know how to do something, if you're injured, if you have any questions, go straight to your manager. Don't think that you need to handle things on your own. Okay, if a teen sees a hazard or a danger in the workplace, it's important to know that they can speak up about that hazard and they cannot be fired for speaking up about it. If the employer won't fix the situation, they need to contact the Department of Labor and Industries and they cannot be fired for contacting us. As for Mallory, life is moving on. She's able to work part-time and started attending community college last fall. And she has some advice for young workers out there. I would suggest they ask for training and and pay attention during the training, not just face off like people would do, you know, I wouldn't, but just actually pay attention. Well, I hope that nobody ever has to go through this because it's just, it's life changing and it's not for the better. If you have questions about workplace rights or labor laws in Washington State, contact the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries Employment Standards Office.